I want to welcome prospective GovTrek students and AAUW branch leaders to the 2024 GovTrek information session. And Happy New Year. I'm, I'm very excited that you've joined us tonight and thank you for your time. Um, I'm Shauna Owning Rule and I'm the GovTrek Program Director with AAUW California. I am also the Public Policy Chair with the AAUW San Diego branch. We're excited to have many students on the call today. Some of you, perhaps you've already registered for the GovTrek Program, thank you. You're going to have an amazing experience. If there are students on the call that have not yet registered, please do so following our session. Um, registration closes on January 20th, and we want to make sure you reserve your seat. We'll put the link in the chat. Actually, Haley, if you don't mind putting all of the links in the chat right now, that'd be great. Thank you. And for our branch leaders on the call today, thank you, thank you, thank you for referring all of the young leaders to join GovTrek from your community. We appreciate you. Kindly save your questions for the end of our presentation today. You can write your questions down or you can put them in the chat since we've opened it for you. Make sure that your questions go to Tracy Ramondini. She is on, on the chat tonight and will be relaying your questions during the Q&A session. Um, hi, Tracy. Hi, Shauna, and welcome everybody. Thank you. We have a packed agenda today, so I'm going to share my screen and get us started. Let me know if you can see my first slide. Can someone speak up yes, and tell me? We can, yes, Shauna, we can see it. Excellent, because I can't see you anymore for some for some reason. That's why I asked you to speak up. So let's um, let's talk about our agenda. Today's agenda, we're going to give you a brief program overview, a high level view of the 2024 schedule and syllabus. We're going to give you a sneak peek at our speaker lineup. We'll cover the campaign simulation project, the requirements and judging criteria, the internships and awards available, and then we'll welcome two of our inspiring GovTrek alumni to share their experiences. Then we'll open it up for questions from the audience. First of AAUW's mission and values, the American Association of University Women founded in 1881 is the nation's leading organization advocating equity for women and girls. Its national membership of 170,000 members and supporters seek to advance equity for women and girls through research, education, and advocacy. Though we are nonpartisan, we are, we are not values neutral. This includes people of every race, creed, age, gender, sexual orientation, national origin, and level of physical ability. All are invited to join. Now, AAUW California's mission is to facilitate California branches in meeting the vision and mission of AAUW by providing programs like GovTrek, education and resources. So what is GovTrek? GovTrek is an educational project by AAUW California to support gender equity for women and girls. It's a free virtual statewide program for young California women who are juniors and seniors in high school. Their programs, the program's goal is to elevate this new generation to pursue careers in public service or elected office. Our goal is to show various career paths in public service and to help you learn the art of political campaigning. Participants will receive a certificate of completion let me, let me back up and say graduates will receive a certificate of completion. You will engage with elected officials. You'll receive possible letters of recommendation. You'll gain knowledge of the political process, gain access to shadow and internship opportunities, 
and develop skills that are critical to college admission and to employment, all making your college applications stand out. And girls, these are life skills that translate to any industry. In a more general sense, we'd like to see more women in public service, and we fully support your political ambition. So some quick housekeeping. In your online registration, students, you've committed to attend all sessions and to be eligible to receive your certificate of completion. Our sessions one through four is where our esteemed speakers and legislators will be joining us. And these sessions will be recorded. Sessions five through seven are critical for you to participate live on your team projects. We know that life happens and some, sometimes things come up, so we understand. But if for, for any reason you're unable to attend class, please communicate with your campaign team and your Zoom breakout room facilitator. And be willing to do your work outside of the class hours because your, your campaign team is depending on you. You're each going to play a role on the campaign team. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is for you to pull your weight. Otherwise, you're leaving your team members in a pretty stressful and unexpected position. You've also agreed to a code of conduct, which we'll review on the first day of class. And finally, a parents, your parents or one parent must complete the permission form sent to them via email in order for you to participate. Please make sure your parents have done so by January 24th. So we're excited to announce the 2024 program dates, as you see on the screen here. All sessions will be held online via Zoom and students will meet for seven consecutive Saturdays from 10 a.m. to noon, culminating with a campaign competition on March 16th from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. The full syllabus can be found online if you'd like to dig deeper. And Haley has put that in the chat as well. But as a high level overview, um, session one will be an orientation and networking opportunity for you to meet other girls from across California. We'll have some fun activities to, to complete and, and this session is about you. We're not, we're not starting the, the program work, so to speak. It's, it's a networking opportunity for you. Sessions two to four will include our guest speakers and legislators, including a woman in leadership career panel, individual reps from the local, state, and national level, and a behind the scenes look at running a political campaign. During session four, you will begin your campaign simulation. So that's that's February 24th. Uh, after our, our, uh, our uh, behind the scenes look at running a political campaign, we will um, separate you into your teams. And along with your breakout room facilitator, you will begin working on your campaign strategy. You'll continue to work on your project, delivering the political campaign video by March 10th. And finalists will participate in the campaign competition on March 16th. We'll give you some more details in a moment about, about your campaign simulation. But first, I wanna give you a sneak peek at our incredible lineup of speakers who are looking forward to engaging with you. We have Dr. Shirley Weber, our California Secretary of State. We have Dr. Ayana Davis, VP of the School Board at Compton Unified School District. We have Congresswo Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren, Rep of California's 18th District. And Griselda Ramirez, Senior Director of External Affairs at the San Diego County Supervisor's Office. These are just four of the speakers that we'll have. Last year, we had legislators, including Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi. We had Congresswoman Anna Eshoo and nine more. This year, we are honored to have up to 12 esteemed women leaders ready to help you explore careers in public service and elected office. Are you excited? We are. So young leaders of California, beginning on February 24th, session number four, your challenge is to create and deliver a political campaign package 
designed to make a positive change in your community, state, or country. Girls will form teams to engage in a real world campaign simulation and compete for a chance to win internships and awards. The campaign simulation includes three components. One, writing and delivering a stump speech. Two, de developing a voter outreach plan. And three, creating a campaign flyer and ad. Ultimately, delivering a final six minute campaign video to be viewed during the statewide campaign competition by our VIP judges. The GovTrek campaign project description is available online and, in, and the link has been shared in the chat. So you're probably wondering how will the teams be formed? Well, based on your response to an issues survey that we'll be sending out in the next couple of weeks, teams of up to seven members who share common policy interests will be assigned, each of whom may also request what role they prefer to play in the political campaign. Um, your location in California is irrelevant. You'll be working with girls from across California to solve some of the biggest policy issues we face in your time. So what role can you play? Well, you can play the candidate or you can play the campaign manager or you can be the field and volunteer manager or you can, communi you can be the communications director and speech writer. Just to reiterate, there's one candidate, there'll be two campaign managers, two field and volunteer managers and two communications directors and speech writers per team. So that's seven total students on your campaign team. Each of these roles are described further in the GovTrek campaign simulation competition document. Again, that's available on the web and it's also been shared in the chat. So, so please take a look and begin thinking how you would like to contribute to your campaign team. It's critical, just a quick note, it's critical that all members of the campaign team work closely together to ensure that their efforts are coordinated, efficient, and that everyone always remains on message. Let's take a quick look at the competition categories and awards. Our VIP judges will be evaluating campaigns on the established criteria to identify the best candidate speech, the best campaign management, the best voter outreach plan, and the best campaign ad and flyer. And of course, the grand prize team will be awarded for the best overall campaign. You can take a closer look at the GovTrack judging rubric, which is also on the web and also shared in the chat. Let's take a look at the awards. For the grand prize winners, all of these team members will receive internships. For all category winners, team members will receive a politically themed or GovTrek themed t-shirt or tote bag and a copy of the Empowered Citizens Guide, 10 Steps to Passing a Law That Matters to You by author Pat Libby. All of our GovTrek graduates will receive a certificate of completion. Just a quick note about our internships. This is what's unique about our program for high school girls. There are no other, other known programs like ours for high school girls that offer these valuable internships in public service. So this is your chance to get real world experience to help you decide on your career direction and add it to your college application. Some of the sample internships have included uh, the opportunity to intern on that campaign trail with a with a candidate running for city council or intern at the democracy summer program this is an annual dem uh, democratic fellowship founded by congressman jamie raskin for college and high school students um, intern with your local congressperson intern with the district attorney program for students local to sacramento intern with your GovTrek and public policy committees of AAUW California, or your local AAUW branch leaders may also help place you in possible internships. On that note, let's take a look at our 2023 grand prize winning campaign video. You will be amazed. 
I need to. Um, please tell me if you see the YouTube video on my screen now. Yes. Excellent. Okay. There's a Elena, you know, team Elena. Yes, it's team Elena. And the teachers are stretched thin. A school where learning is a daily struggle and the odds are stacked against them. You may have to turn up your volume. District 10, specifically Mount Diablo High, a Title I school, this is their reality, and so it was for me. I know firsthand the challenges that our students and teachers face, and I am passionate about finding solutions that work. I believe that every child deserves access to quality education, regardless of their circumstances. And I know that with the right support and resources, we can make a difference for the lives of our students. My name is Elena Oguera, and I am running under the Democratic Party for the District 10 seats in the House of Representatives. I will be a voice for change in the communities where their problems have been overlooked for far too long. Growing up, I saw firsthand how difficult it was for people to access basic necessities. I saw friends and families struggle to find a place to live that they can afford, and I saw people who couldn't afford to get the medical care that they needed. It was heartbreaking to see, and that's why I'm so passionate about affordable housing and accessibility and healthcare. I spent most of my life here, which has allowed me to see where change is needed. The top issues our communities are facing at the moment are access to affordable health care, affordable housing, and improvement in our education system. These three areas are essential components of a fair and just society that ensures that every individual has access and equal opportunities to lead a decent life. We cannot have a fair and just society if healthcare is too expensive for the average family. We cannot have a fair and just society if the cost of housing is so high that working class families cannot afford to live in decent homes. We cannot have a fair and just society if children's education opportunities are determined by their parents' income or zip code. To compensate for the lack of staffing in lower income schools specifically, a more equitable distribution of education dollars in districts and a raise to teacher salaries will create an environment where quality teachers are more likely to stay. When I am elected, I will work to ensure that every student will receive quality education and that parents won't have to choose between bonding with their newborn or paying rent. Affordable housing projects will give more people the opportunity to grow substantial lives in our community. The quality of life for District 10 and our nation as a whole will improve if you allow me to represent you. Help me create a fair and just society that works for everyone. La igualdad no es una opción, es un derecho. I am Elena Noguera, and I am running to be your representative for a seat in the House of Representatives for District 10. Let me represent you, District 10. Thank you. More information about Elena, her campaign, and the issues she's highlighting can be found on her website that is noted on our team's campaign ads and flyers. All are available in Spanish for our Spanish-speaking constituents. This flyer emphasizes how Elena strives to create a fair and just society that works for everyone as a fellow member of District 10. Similarly, the ad functions as a social media graphic that summarizes the issues she is ready to tackle and reminds voters of the November 8th election. From here, we can go to Elena's website, which constituents can choose to view in either English or Spanish as seen here. On Elena's website, we've included her slogan, vision, about page, issues of focus, and opportunities for those who want to be involved in Elena's campaign with volunteer signups and donation forms. Her contact information is also provided here. District 10 encompasses multiple cities, with 46% of the population being Hispanic, 61% of households making $100,000 or less, 32% of children speaking Spanish, and 17% of children living in poverty. The statistics of the cities of Byron, Antioch, Clayton, and Concord are visible on Elena's site because of their needs that align with the issues she focuses on. In comparison, wealthier neighborhoods in the district contain stark differences in demographics, which Elena plans to address by placing emphasis on improving the education system in neighborhoods such as Lafayette and San Ramon, which can increase votes for Elena in these areas. Our canvassing map covers the area of District 10 and also educates viewers on redistricting so that they can be informed voters. This is our voter outreach plan, which will not be visible to the public when published. As of February 10 of 2023, the voter demographics of District 10 include a high percentage of voters being Democrats over Republicans and more youths being pre-registered as being Democrats. As mentioned previously, these are our target voters who are inclined to vote for Elena because her stance on issues align with their needs and because they might identify with her and her story. However, this doesn't mean that they are certain to vote for Elena, so efforts to secure their votes will be implemented as seen in the following.
Our swing voters who are undecided and may not be attached to any political party may be willing to vote for Elena if her stances on issues are in their favor. As swing voters can be vital to winning a close election, our outreach plans include focusing on securing their votes. We have outlined a three-part volunteer recruitment plan that involves in-person, virtual, and hybrid methods. Elena will attend in-person events and will be contacting educational institutions to advertise volunteer and internship opportunities and hold informational sessions on the importance of civic engagement. Virtually, we'll be posting on social media, sending out newsletters, and staying in contact with all volunteers and donors to keep them engaged and informed as our campaign progresses. Training sessions will also be held, and throughout the campaign, feedback forms will be sent out to volunteers for data management. Similarly, our three-part voter outreach strategy includes Elena attending in-person community events for publicity and visibility, and volunteers going door-to-door -door in the neighborhoods of cities that are significantly affected by the issues Elena focuses on. Informational sessions will also be held on voter registration, especially for young voters and English language learners who are less inclined to do so or may need more assistance, as only 62% of the people in District 10 are registered voters. Additionally, we will obtain a list of registered voters in District 10 in order to contact them through texting and call campaigns. Volunteers will consistently post on social media once a day, and newsletters will be emailed bi-weekly. Our nine-month timeline starts on the 14th of February after announcing Elena's candidacy and includes preparation for the primary and general election. Lastly, our budget of $1 million, similar to previous budgets and not including donations, accounts for costs such as ads, flyers, meet and greets, door-to-door -door marketing, and other expenses incurred from fees and taking care of volunteer needs. Thank you for your time, and remember to vote for Elena and her team. Together, we can create a just and fair society for all. Hey, everybody. Welcome to This Week in Startups. I'm so proud of this team. They are amazing. Two of these talented young leaders are serving on the GovTrek Alumni Advisory Board this year and have been giving their youth voice to our committee. They're here with us today, so please be sure to ask them any questions that you might have during the Q&A. Uh, now, I would like to introduce two of our inspiring GovTrek alumni. Um, to share their experience in the 2023 program. Our first testimonial comes from a student who was part of the grand prize winning team, the video you just watched, and she has a promising career ahead of, ahead of her. Let's give a warm welcome to Abigail from Contra Costa County. Um, Abigail, why don't you go ahead and turn on your video and unmute yourself. And I'll stop sharing. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Abigail. I'm a high school senior from Contra Costa County and I participated, excuse me, <clears throat> I participated in the 2023 GoTrek program as a campaign manager for my team's candidate who was running in a congressional election. I found out about GovTrek through my high school's college and career newsletter. And to be honest, I knew just about nothing about congressional campaigns. At the time, I hadn't even considered pursuing political science or any related majors. However, when I came across the GovTrack description, like many of you here might have, I thought it would be fun to try something new, especially since I hadn't come across any opportunities to not only listen to women who were already in the field of public service speak about their careers, but to also learn about campaigning by participating in a mock campaign. So through the program, I love that I had the opportunity to hear from various female legislators, congressional staffers, district attorneys, and school board members who share their career stories and advice. I was also excited to be able to discuss relevant social issues with my team. And for those who persist to the final weeks of the program, where you'll be creating your own campaign, it was really cool that the GovTrek teams had the freedom to develop their own unique campaign strategies, such as how my team created a website to promote our candidate. This program actually developed my interest in public service and led me to interning at the Office of California's 10th District Representative, Congressman DeSonier, in order to understand how congressional representatives serve their constituents upon being elected. As you saw in the presentation, there are many awards and potential internships that can be won from engaging in this program. And while I still had to go through a formal process of sending in a cover letter, resume, and an interview, Mashana was the one who introduced this and many other opportunities to my teammates and I for creating the winning campaign. So it really pays to stay through the whole program and engage with your teammates while creating your campaign. 
Overall, GovTrack was an amazing opportunity to learn about the importance of canvassing, get out the vote touches, and promoting transparency between the constituent and the candidate. I highly recommend all of you to join GovTrack because whether interested in politics or not, the management, communication, and collaboration skills developed from working with students from across California will be beneficial to any career or even in life in general. So thank you all for being here and considering to participate in this wonderful program. Thank you, Abigail. Amazing speaker, right? She's, she's just a, a perfect example of, of um, what you can accomplish in this program. Thank you so much. Next, let's um, well, give a warm welcome to Tomasa Santoyo. Tomasa is our GovTrek College chapter leader, and she's from San Diego County. Let, let me highlight your screen. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today and just making some time, you know. I know it's late, so I just, I really appreciate everyone being here. So as Shauna mentioned, my name is Tomasa and I'm just here to share a little bit about my, my time here at GovTrack. I'm sure all of you guys know me by the emails, by the texts that I've been sending, which thank you to everyone who has replied. Um, you guys have my number, you guys have my email. Any questions, definitely send them my way. But um, yeah, so I was the intern last year and I also served um, as a facilitator. So um, essentially, honestly, having a GovTrack internship on my resume has helped me so much in my career development. Um, just yesterday, I applied as a you know, a govern government strategist. And they kept asking me today, I had an interview and they kept asking me like, so what, what is GovTrek? And they were just so amazed by this program that was so focused on just women and leadership and just taking up space. Because let's be real, um, there is very few representation, you know, and we, we need more of us. We need more of us because I truly believe that America is great, but it can be greater if women run for office. So you guys are already 10 steps ahead of me when I was in high school. Um, I know when I started college, I had no idea what I was going to do. And then I went into political science and even then everybody kept asking me and scaring me and telling me, so what are you going to do with the political science degree? What are you going to do with the political science degree? Because they think that, you know, you, you can't do anything with it, but you can do so much. You can do so many things. And this is why programs like this exist, because you're going to hear about these amazing women who have literally paved the way and are just phenomenal and just have done so much in their career. And I truly love it because they don't tell you about just the easy way on how they, they got to where they are. You know, they literally tell you like, Hey girls, I had to go through this, this X, Y, and Z for me to get here, but here I am and it's possible. And, you know, I, I just, I found that so inspiring but like I said, um, when I graduated, I, I everybody kept asking me what I was going to do with political science degree. And even myself, I didn't really know what I was going to do. Um, so as a facilitator and listening to all of these women, I was like, oh, maybe that would be a good idea. You know, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should try to apply for jobs like that. So just just know that you are in great hands. You are with women that are like-minded. So you, go, you guys are going to build some really great friendships. And honestly, it's going to be so fun. Um, you're going to have some facilitators. So don't be scared. I know it sounds like a lot, but do not be scared. You have a lot of, you know, facilitators that will be holding your hand and will be breaking down everything for you guys. Um, and I, I'm just so excited to see all of you guys. I cannot wait. For you guys to graduate in four, five, six years and to see, you know, the names of probably one of you guys running for president. How amazing would that be? Um, so yeah, so welcome to the team. And I just I look forward to working with all of you. You guys will see my lovely face a lot and um just really 
soak everything in, network, reach out to these, you know, women. These are women that are going to be your mentors that, uh, you know, are just use your networking skills. All of these skills will be applied in your career as a student in your career whatever job that you have. And when you put this in your resume, it's going to look so phenomenal, especially as someone who just graduated high school. This is already something so great for you to apply, um, you know, to put on there. So yeah, and don't be, you know, scared to reach out to any of us for maybe perhaps some letter recommendations or, you know, if you need any other help, um, we're all here for you. And I'm, we're so excited to have all of you. And I know I have talked way too much already, so I will pass um, the podium back to Ms. Shauna. Thank you, Tomasa. You're so well-spoken. I could, I could listen to you for a very long time. Um, and, and I want to learn more about the position you applied for. Uh, we'll have to talk later. Definitely. I'll tell you all about it, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great, great. So we, um, wait, excuse me for a second. Uh, I want to thank Abigail and Tomasa and a third alumni, Haley, who is also on the call, um, who all three of these young leaders will be available during the Q&A. So just reminding you, if you have any specific questions for students or for our college chapter leader slash intern, uh, please, please direct them at, at these um, inspiring young ladies. Haley, I don't wanna put you on the spot, but if you'd like to share anything, please please go ahead. If not, we'll, uh, we'll just uh, let you help out during the Q&A Q session. Um, I mean, I can just add that for me, I wasn't strictly interested in government. When I joined, I was interested in law and I wasn't really sure how this would play out for me if it was gonna be, you know, supporting my interests and expanding them as well. And it turned out perfectly. There were speakers, um, at least last year, there were speakers that were DAs and invested or had previously worked in law and uh, pursued legal careers and stuff like that. And it's all intermixed and intertwined. And I think like Tomasa and Abigail said previously, it's all, even if you're not fully interested in something, these are great skills to have and other careers as well. And there's a whole variety and spectrum of things you can do with a political science major or anything else in government or law. So it's it was a great opportunity and it really opened my eyes to a lot of things. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I had confidence in your ability to do this without preparation. <laughs> Good job, Haley. So before, before we go to q and I would like to um, just give you a quick reminder. So let me share my screen one more time. The next time we'll see each other is Saturday, February 3rd from 10 a.m. to noon for our orientation and our meet and greet. We ask that students register themselves for each Zoom session, as well as the, the GovTrek, um, a GovTrek breakout room facilitators so that you are holding yourself accountable and you're putting it on your calendars. Uh, be sure to complete your policy issue survey, students, to help us place you on the right team. Both will come via email and we are super excited to form the 2024 teams. So with that, I, I want to thank you for your time this evening, and let's open it up for questions from the audience. Uh, please, uh, let's start with Tracy, and, and you can call out the questions that you've collected over the chat, and then uh, we can also have participants raise your digital hand if you have any more questions. So I'm okay. going to stop sharing, and let's go on to the questions. Okay, thank you, Shauna. So the first question is, can team, team members be from different high schools? Absolutely. Yes, yes, that's our goal is, is to, to um, get a good healthy mix of girls from different high schools and acro from across California. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how are the teams formed? So uh, 
I covered that a little bit earlier with the with the issue survey. So we'll be sending out a public policy issue survey to students who have registered. And based on that, you can rank, you'll be ranking um, the top issues that, that interest you most, that are most important to you. And based on the, those interests, we'll try to match you with girls that have similar interests. Well, then second, we'll also, the second criteria will be what role you want to play. So, so even if you all, you know, all have a big concern about gun violence and we matched you up on a team, we're, we're going to make sure that not all seven of you want, want to be the candidate. I hope that makes sense. We, well, we want to make sure to get a good, healthy mix of interest in, in policy issues and in the different roles that you'd like to play on your campaign team. Okay, great. Um, so this is for the students that are on the call to participate. How did they find out about the program and what motivated them to participate? So if there's there are any students that you found out about this and you don't mind um, coming off of mute and just answering that particular question as far as how did you find out the, about the program and, and why are you motivated to participate? Because I already see some hands up, but I think that's for a different question. So I can, go ahead. I can share real quick. So for me, I had previously participated in another AAUW event, um, and I was contacted through that because they had my contact information, um, which is also another great thing about AAUW is once you do something, one program of some sort, you're going to have kind of basically like lifelong connections. You can always go back and um, contact other people. Um, but what motivated me to continue was like I said previously, I didn't have a specific interest in government, but I had an interest in law and I wanted to see, I wanted to just broaden my horizons and see what other options there were and maybe, or, but at the same time, like target and see what do I really want to do in this kind of general field that I was looking at. And there were a ton of speakers and opportunities to learn about different um, pathways I could go with my future. And that's kind of why I decided to do it. Is there anyone else that would like to answer that question? It's only. Um, I can answer because it also leads into my question. Um, so I was with AAUW since seventh grade for the STEM one tech track, but I found out that I don't want to be in a hospital, that I want to be out here like making change. And so that's why I saw this program. But I'm actually not, I'm a 10th grader. I'm not in 11th or 12th, but I still got the email and I still do um, other, like I'm with my district representative, Mike Fong. I'm actually in his leadership program and like I'm with other like politics stuff. So I wonder if I would still be allowed to participate because um, I'm not in 11th or 12th grade. This is interesting. K Kiko, is that how you pronounce your name? Keiko, yes. Keiko, sorry. All right, uh, Keiko, you are the second person who's who has been in tenth grade that has asked us this. So it's, it's interesting. Um, our our policies and procedures clearly state that only juniors and seniors can participate. But I, because there's two of you now, I I'll take it back to our committee and to our board and see if we can make an exception. So, so let me write your name down and. Um, and we'll get back to you. I thank you so much for your interest. Okay. Did we answer everything for you, Keiko? Yes, thank you. Great. Okay. okay. And just to piggyback on that, we we do know because we did speak with the, the students, they heard about it from teachers, counselors, school um, flyers and coffee shops, um, AAUW members. Also advertised. There are a variety of different of different ways of um, the students finding out, and most of them they were interested in being involved in political leadership. Shauna, did you want to piggyback on that? No. No. Okay. Um, this one's from a student, and um, this student said that they will be missing meetings. How many meetings should they be at to seriously consider being a team member? And um, so I'll let you take that. I, I know you did mention that, that um, you're you're expected to try, you know, to be at all the meetings, but I'll let you take that one as well. So 
let me go back to that slide. It's it's sessions four, five, and six that are, are most, I don't want to say most critical, but it's that's where you'll be doing your teamwork. If you can check the calendar, yeah, I could bring that bring it back up on the screen and you could take a picture of it. Let's see. Um yeah, let me share my screen. Give me two seconds. Okay, so it's February 24th, March 2nd, March 9th, where you, your attention is required for your team, for your project. So if you're going to miss any of those days, um, I think you need to ask yourself, are you able to, to do your work outside of the class hours? as you know because you'll be assigned certain pieces of the project so if you can do that and and miss you can please join the program but but again just just be wary of of your team members and and that they're relying on you because that was that was a challenge last year when students would miss the project work and then some other students had to pick up the slack that's just not really fair to them does that help answer? Whoever asked that question? Okay, I hope so. Right, I yeah. didn't want to put them on the spot. Oh yeah, okay, okay, I'm gonna <laughs> stop sharing. <laughs> Good point. Uh, um, okay, so there's a question that's for Abigail. Um, Abigail, can you provide some background? You, I sent you the question, Abigail, right? Yeah, so okay. I can answer. So yes. The question was um, just to explain how the winning team produced the outstanding on um, the video, and then how much time did it take, and then how did the the team split up the work, and then do the different parts. So I'm not exactly sure how long it took, and maybe Haley can chime in later. But it did take a lot of work for Haley and I as campaign managers after each meeting to work on it just together to take the video together because you have to videotape it individually. And so it's kind of hard to do that while in the Zoom meeting with other people. And so our, our candidate had to videotape that on her own time. And then she sent the video clips to Haley and I, and Haley went through uh, this platform called Canva, which is a tool that you can play um, piece of videos together. And so that's how we got the whole video started. And we also use Canva to make our ads, social media posts and flyers. And they have um, different uh, templates that you can choose from, or you can just make your own original design. And so I'm not sure how exactly long it took, but initially in our first meetings, when we met together to decide on what we wanted to do and um, what roles we were going to take, we had to split it up based on what role each person wanted. So I wanted to be a campaign manager. And so that included helping with the flyers, the campaign video, making a schedule for our team. And so we did have some people drop out a little bit. So I also took over the voter outreach plan, which is a different role that somebody can have. And then Haley did a lot of the editing and putting the video together. So I don't know if Haley wants to add a, a little more to that. Um, yeah, I don't know exact timing, but I'd say maybe we spent outside of the actual given meeting time, maybe three to four extra hours. But as Abigail said, we had some people that weren't participating in our group more than more people weren't participating, I think, than were, which made it difficult for us. So realistically, you're not going to be spending that. Well, unless you do something like above and beyond, you're not going to be spending that much time outside of the meetings. But if you want to create a full, um, you know, portfolio, basically, and campaign speech and everything, you might spend a couple more hours outside than is provided. Plus, there's an extra meeting this year. So I think it will give you more time than we had anyways. So I don't think it's as... Um, it won't be as extensive, I think, as Abigail and I had it. Okay. Absolutely. And thank you, Haley and Abigail. And they still won the grand prize. <laughs> I just need to give you props for that. Uh, okay. Um, but, and, but Tracy, yeah. Tracy, we will have we will have Haley and Abigail and a lady named Zoe, a young lady named Zoe, uh, providing what we were calling office hours so they can help other students guide them along the way since you've already gone through this experience. I mean, their, their experience is so invaluable and, and to offer that to other students is just beautiful. 
Tomasa has also done a fantastic job of, of making uh, a Canva tutorial for those students who may not be familiar. Well, they might be familiar with Canva, but maybe they don't know how to, to put everything together into a campaign video. She put a quick, easy demo together that, that can be shared with your students as well. So as we're growing and developing this program, we're making it better for, for we're making it the experience better for, for participants. Okay, you, you could see the high quality of the ladies we're working with, Tomasa and Haley and Abigail. And um, Shauna, who was the uh, person in charge of that team? Who was the adult that worked with that team that won? It, there was, there were two of us. There mm -hmm. was, yeah. Yeah, Shauna, I mean, I can't help it. She's so, she was such, she, it's like a proud you know moment for her and her team. And they yeah. worked really hard. It's the highest quality ever. And so it's really fortunate that they had an opportunity to work with you, Shauna. Um, okay, there's I a love it. I, I mean, I'm proud yeah. of these girls, like, like, like they're my own daughters, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Okay, Haley, um, this is a question for you Which AAUW event did you attend, and how did you learn about GovTrek? Um, I think it was AAUW Tech Trek in like 2017, I think. So it was quite a while ago, but my mom was also part of the AAUW program, like, she was a member. Um, for a couple years after that. So I, I just had a connection through that. And I think she initially got the email before I did. Um, and that's how we found out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and there are some very patient women with Margaret Swick that have, <laughs> they have, I'm sorry, ladies. I know you're sitting very patiently. I appreciate, thank you for being so um, patient. I wanted to get through the chat that had already come in prior to you raising your hand. Thank you. Your question. Excellent, thank you very much. We're calling from Chico and this is our first time participating. So we've got a lot, a couple of operational questions. One was already answered about how many extra hours it might take the girls. Um, we met with our school district today for outreach and one question they had was it, um, are um, people that are transgender, identify as transgender allowed to participate? And then yes. the other, okay. Good. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And um, can I ask how many people have registered already? Yes, we have um, a couple, let's see, a couple trickled in be, uh, this afternoon. So I'm trying to, trying to get the number correct. We have 54 students registered. Okay. And what's the capacity again? We, we have room for 140. Okay, excellent. So we're not too late. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, thank you for reaching out to your school administrators. Did they have any other questions? No, no. They were happy that it was on a Saturday, um, not taking the uh, students out um, of their classwork. So they were excited about it. We've done the um, uh, Trek Tech and yeah, and, and <laughs> about 20 years and had a lot of success with that. So they had that familiarity. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, we hope that, uh, we hope to see some future leaders coming from Chico. Great, <laughs> so do we. <laughs> okay, um, Sean, there's another question in the chat. How will we keep in contact with the other girls that will be in our group? We ask girls to set up a, 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 phone, a phone group chat, you know, like on their, on their cell phones or by email. And some girls have access to, to either, you know, Microsoft Teams or Zoom, a free Zoom account or, or some type of meeting software that if they choose to do work outside of the class. Otherwise they come to, to the uh, campaign simulation Zoom sessions that we offer. Okay. Um, so how can we best make the contacts needed within the high schools for participation. Giving time restraint, given time restraints, this will probably be for next year. But actually it's not too late to, to still get involved now as you're hearing. So um, do you want to address that, Shauna? You want me to help out or how do you want to do that? Can you, I, I think you ran down the list earlier if you want to 
uh, do it again. We, we touched upon it. And then if there, there are any other ideas from the committee, feel free to um, chime in as well. But counseling departments at schools, at districts, you can get in charge, uh, or you get, get in touch with the district and ask them who, who is the person in charge of um, reaching out to the schools. Government classes in particular would be a good place. Flyers, um, anywhere that you want. Friends, family members can contact other people. Um, are there any other ideas that, that we had? I remember we talked about a list of them. But the Great. schools are a big resource. Yep, schools are, are our top resource. Mm -hmm. I think some some girls have found our flyer at Starbucks or at the public library. So you can share that with your public library or post it up in Starbucks if they allow you to. Um, or partners, other partners, uh, non typically nonprofit organizations that align with our mission. They, they can share it out with their girls or their audience. Girl Scouts, other you know political leadership programs for high schools, high school girls, Seroptimist uh, clubs, Seroptimist mm -hmm. clubs mm -hmm. from high schools. Uh, Becky, do you have any suggestions? Um, one of the things that we did, I went to a lot of my uh, women's groups, uh, my political groups, um, and shared that with their. Um, with their membership uh, to try to get them to identify any girls that might want to participate. Um, I also reached out to some uh, high school teachers that I know. I talked to the superintendent of our local district. Uh, so I did a lot of kind of hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat, if you will, um, to try to get folks um, interested. So I, I kind of went all over the place just because things kind of led me to. Yeah. Right. And and Becky, Rebecca Gomez is one of our valued committee members, but she's also serving as a city council member for Tustin. Yes, ma'am. So, so we, we have her expertise as well contributing to this amazing program. All right. Okay. Uh, Tomasa, you have a question. Which year are you in in college? And how did you learn about the GovTurn? In, in or the GovTrack internship? Yeah, so I actually graduated from college already. Um, I'm currently applying to master's programs, but one of the, it was so funny actually how I learned about GovTrack. It was honestly because I talk way too much. Um, I was uh, attending a um, an event for Malcolm X's daughter and um, I met an AAUW member in line um sh we just hit it off she was like hey i have a friend who would love a political science major i think you would be great she reached out to shauna uh, and now here i am <laughs> mm -hmm. on my second year um and hopefully many many more years because i am such an advocate for gut trick i think it's an amazing program and honestly you guys are gonna have so much fun honestly like I am so excited, so excited for you guys, quite frankly. Um, and like I said, you guys have my number. So any questions, anything, just shoot me a text. <laughs> okay, so Tomasa, kind of a follow-up is that this branch wants to get engaged with um, local college students. Do you have a suggestion on how, who they may contact? Yeah, um, what, what branch is it? If there's... I'm actually not sure. Um, have them email me so we can we can um connect. Yeah, so we can connect. Maybe we can do a, a Zoom meeting or something. So I have a couple ideas. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Do good. you want to put? Would you like to put your email in the chat? Yeah, absolutely. Let me go ahead and put that in the chat. Okay. So another, um, we have a hand up from Juliana or Juliana. I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Yeah, so I did tech track before, but it was when they, when I got accepted, it was right before COVID started. And then they invited me back um, the first year that they did it like online. And I just remember that it was 
kind of weird because even they weren't sure exactly how to run it. They were used to doing it in person. So I just wanted to know this. Is it like, us- is, has it always been online? And is it like more, I don't want to say controlled because it was ran well, but it just like some things weren't exactly right and it wasn't the most entertaining thing ever. So um, like basically is it ran well and like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it very well. Um, well, sure, Juliana, I can I can answer that. I'd be glad to. Um, the first GovTrek program was pilot program was done in the Oceanside Vista branch. I think it's Oceanside Vista San Marcos, or no Carlsbad branch. Sorry, and same thing happened is they they got part way through the program and this was this was live. It was not virtual. And they got part way through the program and COVID hit. So they couldn't complete it. Last year, our AAUW California president made the decision that she wants to take GovTrek virtual. And so that's that's where um, I was asked to join uh, the leadership team of AAUW California and build out the program with the intention of it being virtual. So I, I, I would like to say that yes, it's it's well run, <laughs> and I I can vouch for it because I have experience delivering virtual education. I've worked as a as a nonprofit executive director, specifically delivering virtual education to underserved populations in New York while I lived here in San Diego, California. So so to answer your question, yes, it's 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 intended to be virtual. Okay. No, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure it was like, you know, it, that I was going to enjoy it because oh, yeah, <laughs> last time yeah. it was just, it was kind of chaotic a little bit. Yeah. Shauna, can, oh, can I mention something as well? Please. Yes. Um, I am also a community college uh, or former community college instructor and a dean. And one of our other committee members is also um, a college instructor. So both of us have extensive um, experience teaching online. Yeah, so we you. have made tweaks to this program um, to make sure that um, there's opportunities for you to learn as well as to, to stay engaged. So hopefully uh, that answers part of your question because that, that I think is a big, um, a big plus to the committee uh, yeah. membership. It does, thank you. Thank you, Becky, thank you. Okay, um, Tomasa, there's a request for you to please put your email in the chat again, please. Thank you. And then we're running down to it, so two minutes. Um, so beyond getting the girls to register, is there any need for involvement of branch members beyond that to support their participation? And I think um, it would be, keeping them involved, contacting them, being there as a cheerleader, being there if they need some help or information. So it's just kind of helping them as a parent get their homework done kind of thing. They may have questions for you, so they may re reach out. You might want to contact them, how's everything going, to try and get them to stay and participate and finish out the program. Did you want to add anything for that, Shauna? Uh I'm actually trying to to copy Tomas's email address into the chat. So oh, that everyone, yeah. Because I think oh, okay. I think you might have been sending it just to mm -hmm. Tracy, which it's because that's how we set it up. Yeah, so let I me. Got you. Oh, I, I think apologize. I Here, I'm going to. Okay. I um, do. I did it. Jean. Can Can we also get um Keiko's email as well, so we can follow up with her um regarding you know our decision yes did you already okay. Okay. so you, I, would, I would say yes um you, there is the need to continue participating with the the students that you have from your branch and there's a question about trainings 
Um, are there branch? Are there? Is there an opportunity for branch members to be trained as facilitators? Absolutely, yes. And I and I invited facilitators to join the call today, I, if if they were available. We will be holding a facilitator training prior to the program. The date is still to be determined. And Tomasa, speaking of Tomasa, has volunteered to be the facilitator lead. And I'll be joining her and training her as well. So I'll be available as well. But but together we're going to make sure that our facilitators are are well trained. It, there's another student that's a sophomore, Sydney Kangney. Sydney, can you drop your address um, off to me as well so we can get in touch with you? And Keiko too? I have Keiko's. And then so Sydney, give us your email, please. I see Kiko's in the in the chat. Oh, Kiko. Okay. You have Keiko. That? Can you? Oh yeah, Kiko. I yeah. Have... I'll grab that. Can and you get that one? On. Okay, and then we're waiting. And then Sydney, go ahead and send us. I have Sydney's. You must too, also, Shauna. And if any of you guys have friends that you know you want to bring onto the program, please, 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 please bring them on. I think it would be fun. I wish I had a friend that you know, I would have um, brought on and you guys could work on this together. You know, it would be a great experience. If it would. Okay, 8.02. Oh my goodness. Yep. I think we have um, hit our time. If, if we have not answered all of the questions, uh, please. I'm sorry. What, just one quick question. Now, sure. uh, Tomasa has two showing. Which one does she prefer? Two different emails showing. Which do you Either prefer? Either or. Either oh. or. Both both go to my phone. So I'm all, I'm constantly checking that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, and and I I did see one other question in the chat that said, can I share this with other girls? As I was in the I think you said I was in the Hope program. Um Yes, please, please share it with anyone who is a, a junior or senior in high school. And we're checking on the sophomore possibility. And then there is one, Nadine, are you, Wilcox, are you trying to say something? It looks like Margo raised her hand. Margo does have her, her hand up now. Did Margo raise her hand? Margo? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was wondering how we would find out whether or not girls from our um, AEW service area have registered so that we could be potential mentors to them. I have um I have a link, uh I have a link for you, Margo. I'll send it to you for the program here. Um okay. where you can you can check an, an Excel file that we have on the internal website. And no, no, I'm sorry. It's on a Google, a private Google Drive. And you can check to see which students are from your area. Oh, great. So do you need Mark, my email? I do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shall I type it in the chat? Yeah, if you don't mind. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. And I, I see Santa Cruz. I know that you need some uh, some help um, recruiting on the best way for student recruitment. We will reach out to you by email as well. I know that might be, well, I mean, that, that'll be up until the 20th, which is the registration deadline, or it will be for next year. Um, either way, uh, we appreciate your interest. And thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. We, uh, we will see you soon. Great. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Have a good one. Thank good you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.